Welcome everyone to Filmmakers Lab Podcast. I am your host, Lena Colleen. And today, my guest is Chandrea E. Carmichael, award-winning filmmaker. She's also a director, a writer, producer, and actress. And she just added caterer to her repertoire. Yes, I have. (laughs) I'm so glad to have you on my show. Because I'm not a horror person. I'm not into that horror stuff. I know you're a horror fanatic. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I'm more into comedy. comedy. I like to make people laugh. Okay. But I think that horror, for me, I was traumatized at an early age. Someone let me watch Carrie. Oh, wow. Do you remember Carrie? Yeah, I remember Carrie. It's <laughs> one of my favorites. I bet. I can imagine. <laughs> um, someone let me watch that. Uh uh, irresponsible adult and I was that was it for me I, I was like I, I don't want to watch those films anymore oh. <laughs> so tell me something I know a lot of people have said that film they kind of fell into it um, they it, it kind of found them mm-hmm. how did you get started yeah I got started with film because of an internship at the Apex Museum. Oh, nice. That's the museum here in Atlanta, Mm -hmm. African-American Museum. Mm -hmm. And the director, Mr. Moore, inspired me to go into film. Mm -hmm. I was telling him that I was writing a script with my friend. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't have the budget or the money Mm -hmm. for the film to try to make it. And he said, well, you know, you can always put an ad out on Craigslist and try to hire your cast and crew from there so I did that and that's how I got into film nice from just the internship so so you didn't grow up saying oh you know I want to be a filmmaker I want to you know you didn't walk around with a camera like some people I did have a camera that's the thing I had a camera I used to record everything that I did look at that um record family but I didn't think about going into film I get it I was a mass communications major okay and I was thinking that I had to pay the bills. Mm-hmm. So maybe film directing or being a filmmaker may not pay the bills because Got of the struggle. You. Right. And I've all, always acted and I used to write plays. Okay. So my background is playwriting, musical theater. That's right. my background. Right, 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 right. And I just got into the film stuff by, and I, I'm not going to say by accident, but I think it's my true calling. My bad. <laughs> so I, I get that. I get that. A lot of times we're doing it and we don't realize we're doing it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And you just, your purpose is there and you just, you find your way. Right. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I know that you attended um, Atlanta Metropolitan State College. Yes, I did. And um, you did some films there. I did. You did uh, Assumptions 101. Mm -hmm. And you did uh, Lights, Camera, Action, Hollywood. Yes. So... Those were all theater plays, stage plays. Oh, okay. And they were parodies like Saturday oh, Night nice. Live. Okay. I do I do comedy. Look at um, that. So <laughs> when we were when we were doing the um plays, they were parodies. Okay. And the assumption one oh one was assuming about someone's race mm. and the stereotypes that they have um about um you know, certain people, um, racial background. Mm. And I portray a Indian girl from East India. Oh wow! Um, I portrayed her in the assumptions that they have about Indian people. Okay. And then I had assumptions about um, Caucasians mm-hmm. and African Americans and Hispanics, and we were all on the plane. Look at that! And I wrote it. <laughs> oh wow! And you you directed it? And yeah, you I directed it, it wrote well. it, and produced it. Man, I envy you. <laughs> Why? Well, because that's a lot of work. I mean, listen, I'm a writer. That's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. Just writing is a lot of work. You know what I mean? But, I mean, I've been part of putting productions together. Mm -hmm. Producing is not my thing, but, you know, in this business, especially if you're doing it as an independent, you're going to be producing. Right. So that's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot of work. It is a lot of work. It is. I mean, it's a lot of work, but 
it's a necessity, a necessity. It's something that we have to do mm -hmm. as, as independents. Um, so those were stage plays. Okay. I wish you would have, um, had them recorded so that we could see them somewhere. I did re okay, re recorded lights, camera action, and I had to try to find that on tape. But assumptions one on one, we didn't record that. You didn't. Mm -mm, we didn't record it. Man, and it sounds like something I would want to see. It was funny. <laughs> yeah, I can it imagine. was. You know, it was like satire yeah. parodies. Yeah. And then I'm like, I was like, I hope I don't get in trouble because <laughs> I was portraying an Indian, you know, person from I East got India. You. So right. But um, it, it had a message to it, mm -hmm. and I think we did it in two thousand seven or eight. Okay. So what it was, was the message. The message was you can't assume about someone's race if you don't know them. True indeed. And we are always prejudiced about other people's races when we don't know about them, and that's what the um play was actually about. Okay. This was the time when the college was becoming more integrated with different nationalities. Mm, okay. And we did the, um, actually play during the, um, what is that? It's not multicultural month. It's something like that mm -hmm. that the colleges have mm -hmm. where um, different cultures present us with their food. And you learn about their um, country, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. learn about the food that, they're, that they eat. And so it's not so stereotypical, um, you know, portrayals of what, how other nationalities and cultures are put in the media. Got you, got you. And I, it was a great experience. How did how did the students receive it? They received it. Okay. They received it. It was like you know. <laughs> was it controversial? I mean, um, it had to um, we had to take some of the controversial stuff out. Okay. <laughs> Um, because it has had to go through our advisor. She was like, well, we can keep this, but then we can't keep this because we don't want it to look too buffoonery. Yeah, I got you. So, yeah. yeah. Got you. And it has to be um, friendly oriented. Um, Definitely. For, so, if students want to bring their children, they were able mm, to, for sure. you know, watch, you know, having cursing. Right. Had to take a little bit of that out. Right, right. But it had to be, um, you know, kid friendly, family got you, friendly. Got you, got you. Um, real quick, uh, you it said you said that. Well, I read that you did reality based horror. What, um, what is that? What I mean, um, reality is that like Blair Witch type stuff. Um, I guess no. <laughs> um, reality based means. Putting an everyday person in a horror position. Oh, gotcha. That's what that means. Okay. Like, it can be, like, someone that works at the library, they're not doing anything. I got you. Okay. So. <laughs> I it, said, what is that? <laughs> no. <laughs> just the characters. <laughs> the characters are just real people. Okay. Okay. I got you. Okay. So, I'm, inter I'm, I'm, I'm interested. We're going to get to um, Johnny, I Want My Liver Back. But I'm interested to know about your production company. How do you pronounce it? Okay, so I have two production companies. Okay, so Berlin's Roulette? Berlin's Roulette. Berlin's Roulette, okay. Where did that name come from? That's a combination of my family members that have passed oh, on and um, instilled in me to become whatever it is that I wanted to be. I think they always knew that I wanted to be an actor I love or that. actress. Yeah. So the bird comes from my aunt bird to my great aunt. Mm -hmm. The last come from my aunt Paulette with the L E. Nice. My grandmother's name was Elizabeth mm -hmm. and my two uncle Rays. Look at that. So yeah. So that's <laughs> why I came up with that name for that production company. Got you. That was my first production company. Um I decided to revamp myself as a filmmaker. Mm -hmm. Since I was focusing more on the thriller films, mm -hmm. the horror films, mm -hmm. so that's when I came up with Horror House Films Got you. in 2019. Okay. And I said, I just established Horror House Films for the horror films and then Burlesque Raylette for the um, nun horror films. Everything else. Got mm -hmm. you. Okay, okay. I don't know why I didn't know that uh, Horror House was you. I don't know why. I should have known that was you. Though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Does it have a website? Um, not yet, but we have an Instagram and a Facebook page. Okay. Can you, can you give us the Instagram real quick? Um, the Instagram is Horror House Films 
And it's also on Horror House Films on Facebook as well. Okay. Got you. And is, so are your companies like full, full production companies? Like everything from writing all the way to the end distribution and. Yes, we're full production. Oh, nice. Okay. Love it. Love it. Love it. Now, what I want to talk to you about. Johnny, I want my liver back. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) I got a chance to watch it. What inspired you to write that film? Okay, so what inspired me to write the film is my Uncle Russell inspired me to write the film. Okay. He told us the story when we were children, my cousins and I. And Really? Yes. <laughs> and in the story with Johnny, mm-hmm. Johnny is, is a child between the ages of six, I think seven and eight. Okay. But for my film, I use the teenagers instead of using um, seven, eight-year-olds or Mm 10-year-olds. It's really a story that teaches to tell the truth Mm. and not to lie and to steal because in the original story, Johnny, mom sends him to the store to buy some liver. Right. And he uses that money to go and buy candy. But in my okay. version of it, I used it as Johnny having a gambling problem and him trying not to make that decision to go to, you know, the little gambling party that his friend DJ throws. Right. And his friend Bonita is trying to tell him, you know, I think you don't need to do this because he do some shady stuff. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I can't explain, tell what happens, but... um, No, don't. But that's what inspired me to do the story. And the odd thing is that he wasn't able to make my premiere for my first film, the game, no, my second film, The Games of Children Play. Mm -hmm. And he said that he would come to the next part, to my next project. And I told him that I'm going to do Johnny, I Want My Liver Back. Mm -hmm. And that was like in 2015 to 2016. Mm -hmm. And he passed. He passed from a heart attack. He just died suddenly from the heart attack. Oh, wow. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I was like, oh, God, okay, it was, it, yeah, he's one of my favorite uncles. All my uncles yeah. are my favorite uncles, yeah. and they are my father figure. Mm-hmm. So it was a really heartbreaking, mm-hmm. you know, because he it wasn't. Still bothers you. Yeah, it does, because yeah. I wanted him to see it, and, yeah. and, I, and he was so excited about it. Oh, man. He was so excited about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> okay, I didn't know that was going to come out, but. I'm glad it did. Yeah. And 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 at least you got a chance to do it and finish it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, I mean, whatever you believe in, who knows? He he might be watching over you if that's what you believe. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, and we're here. So, um so did Tony Vaughn is he like maybe representative of that that uncle? Yeah. He is. Yeah, he is. Um, my uncle Russell name, he, I think his name was supposed to be Stevie. Or it's either Stevie Russell, Russell Stevie. Oh, okay. And I was like, okay, <laughs> if if I cast anyone, because I we was in talks with Tony Vaughn about this in 2018, mm-hmm. 2019. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we wanted to film in 2020, but you know, the, yes, we could not. Pandemic. And it was a good thing that you know that we did not because we still needed more funds to mm. try to um produce the movie. Mm-hmm. But I was like, if anyone's going to portray my Uncle Russell, it's going to be Tony Vaughn. Nice. And he did a great job. He really did. He did a great job. <laughs> he really did. Um, you know, without giving too much of the story away, there's a lot of layers in the story. Mm-hmm. You have, um, you know, the love story. Mm-hmm. Um, do you think, because a lot of independent films, I'm not, you know, I'm not one of, I'm not going to say anybody specifically, a one layer, you know, just one dimensional. There's no, you know, story. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's important to have layers? Um, I believe so. Yeah. I think the reason I have layers Mm -hmm. is because of what, um, I can, I'm trying to think his name right now. John Carpenter said. Okay. About horror films. He was saying that, he disliked horror films, you know, that have, I'm not quoting, but I'm just going by what he was saying gotcha. in different interviews. Mm-hmm. He was saying that he disliked horror films where it's just go, you get straight to the murdering <laughs> and the killing. Right. You have to build up 
a story. Mm -hmm. And so I build up my story be stories because I think they comes from the mass communications major in me. Yes. Building a story, researching a story. Mm -hmm. And Wes Craven did the same thing with his stories. He mm -hmm. researched them so he, so he can have like different layers. Um, so you can have everyone to fall in love with the character, not fall in love with the character. Yeah. And to just build a background story around the characters and the Johnny got on my nerves. Yes. Yeah, he got on my nerves. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to beat him up. <laughs> right. I was like, Johnny had to make wise decisions. Yes, you <laughs> but know. But he wasn't. So 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 you, you mentioned Wes Craven. Is that somebody that's that you're inspired by? Yes. Um Wes Craven mm -hmm. is one. John Carpenter is one. Yeah. Um Jordan Peele. Yeah. Is um is an inspiration. Mm -hmm. Um, it's not really that many females that I can say. It's not. That's why I wanted you to have have um, you on my show. You know that I can say that and you know inspire right. me as a writer, director, producer. Right. Of, right. Of Viola Davis, like she's one of my, I'm one of her biggest fans. Mine too. Um, I love her acting. Mm -hmm. But um, as far as the women, it's not that many. You. Um, me and the young lady that recently did the new Candyman. Yes. And Misha, um, um, I can I forgot her last name, but she did the Lovecraft Country. Okay. So yeah, so it's only a handful of us it that is. you know that's into that genre. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, going back to the story. Um, I was about to ask you something. Oh, so. <laughs> What I saw in the film, without not giving too much of it away, um, the black person didn't die. Mm -hmm. Well, no, actually, yeah, no, no, the black person didn't die. What the white person did <laughs> was that? Did you was you conscious of that? You, no. Did you flip that? Was that a flip? <laughs> I, you know, I did flip it because initially it was supposed to be the other way around mm -hmm. for the story. Look at that. But then I was like, no, so I'm going to put Johnny, you know, into mm -hmm. the... That character. That yeah, role. let him, because it is Johnny, I want my liver back. Yeah, he's the antagonist. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I was like, I'll just keep it, you know, how I wrote it. I didn't want to flip it. Yeah. But, um... I thought it was interesting. Yeah? Yeah, I did. And then, you know, his character, uh, DJ's character... He over the top. Weird. Yes. Way over the. <laughs> he was actually. I mean, was he? Did he get a lot of direction, or that was just him? He got a lot of direction. Um, the director Al told him, "I want you to act this way," and he took it to ten. He did. <laughs> I think like more than ten. Took it like twenty he times really forty. Yeah. Um, he's a theater actor. You could tell. So I I knew obvious. right off the bat. I was like, yeah, he's about to. He's going to. Tear this part up, <laughs> and um, theater mode. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it was good though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, yeah, he was, was good. good. Who Who was your favorite character to write for? Uh, I want to say it was the cousins. Oh, okay. So Wanda Braxton and Henry Louis Adams portray yeah, the two cousins. Yeah, so the yeah, two yeah. cousins in the film are my cousin Marcella and I mm -hmm. when we were younger but you know we okay. adults now gotcha. but that's how we would always act we grew up like sisters and brothers with all my cousins we grew up like we were sisters and brothers mm -hmm. and it it was I, I guess when he see he's going to be like that's us for real that's how we always act <laughs> like that we got to they adults were funny and my grandmother would say are y'all still acting like that <laughs> she was like y'all are adults are still acting like that you know what at first I thought they were married Mm -mm. But then I went back and read the pitch deck, and I was like, "Oh, they're cousins. I get mm -hmm. it. Yeah, their inter their interactions were good. What what is the um the male the male's part uh name in the his um real yeah Henry Lewis Adams Henry Lewis Adams. Okay, I just wanted to give everybody their shine. Yeah, he is known for the crime, true crime stories. Oh, okay, he has been in a lot of the true crime stories. <laughs> <laughs> portraying different people, but he's always portraying the killer. You know, like the person that's doing the murdering. Right. He's not even like that. He's a very nice person. He seems like it. But he's not like that. Wow. In person. <laughs> yeah. He looked familiar, but I couldn't place his face. Yeah, the true true crime, he portrayed um one of the sheriffs in DeKalb County that okay. um, murdered his wife. 
I saw that. And blamed it on the day laborer. I saw that. That was him. I knew he looked familiar. Yeah, that was him. Wow. He's an awesome actor. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, believe it, he was the one that did it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, again, you produced this film, too. Mm-hmm. Um, people don't know how much work goes into it. What do you think was the most challenging part of of the producing? I think the most challenging part of the producing, because I'm also the executive producer. Right. The the funding, like when you're a producer, Mm -hmm. the problem is the funding. Yes. Um, You can have your actor already lined up, your locations in place, but it's the funding. Yes, ma'am. And as a producer, we have to go and seek funding um, for the production. I was going to ask you this question later, but I'm going to ask it now since you brought that up. How did you go about getting your funding? I went about getting my funding through, we tried to do the Kickstarter, but the Kickstarter, it did not work. Right. I had to use some of my own money. Mm -hmm. I had to, like, draw from my 401k. Look at that. And then um, we did the um, PPP loan. Mm. And that's how we were able to make this movie. And my mom, right. she helped as well. Yeah. And then the other producers, um, Emily Jane mm-hmm. and Tony um, Sims, we all put our money in mm-hmm. collectively mm-hmm. to produce this film. Look at that. And we, we, and we didn't did think we were going to be able to do it because the money, some of the money was already there. And yeah. then we had to wait until... Like Monday, for the last shoot, and the money it, it it came. Like the crew, they took half of the they took half their payment. Mm-hmm. Um, so they so so we could do the film. I was right. I started counseling. I was like, I don't think we need to do the film wow. because we don't have all our funding. Yeah. Like we were short fifteen thousand dollars. We were short. <laughs> oh wait. I know what that's like. Mm-hmm. I do. I do know what that's like. And then it just, it came together. My mom was like, I'm going to help you. That's I was like, Mom, you don't have to help me. <laughs> don't let me see what I can do. And she helped. Look at that. She came up and brought up the rear. Yeah. The rear. yeah. And we got yeah. the rest of the funding. Yeah. I tell you, for independence, it's, it's so hard. It is. That money, getting that money is so hard. And it's a short film, so exactly. it's not like a feature film. Right, <laughs> it's a short film, and I spent about thirty five thousand on this on the film. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, that's about the size of it. That that's yeah. that's a normal, you know, price range for a, a short, short film. film. Yeah, it's what like forty five minutes long. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, mine is. 47, 47 minutes. Mm-hmm. Honestly, that's a miracle that you did it in that amount. Really? I think so. Because I know some people can do it for like 15. But you, it's horror, though. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I think horror is different in that yeah. it's so many more moving parts. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Your your um, props have to be on point. You know, there's like elements of horror that have to be, yeah. you know what I mean? And that last scene. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to tell it. Yeah, the last scene, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. That takes, you know, a good editor, you know what I mean? Right. Like, that's not something that you can just throw together, Mm-mm. you know? So, bravo. And it could be in our actors, too, because, you know, we had the, yeah. this already known, well-known, so, yeah. That, We're going to get back to that. That's where the book came from. We're going to get back to that. Because, yes, you did have some known actors, which is, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's not an easy feat. Um. What what lessons did you learn during the production? Like, what did you learn? Um, because I know every set is different, and we always learn something. This was the first set I wasn't stressed out. Look at that! Like I learned not to be stressed out. I'm gonna beat him up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I learned not to be stressed yeah. out like I was with the previous um that. films because um the money was paying as mm-hmm, we went, mm-hmm. but this was is here Mm -hmm. and I learned not to be stressed out Mm -hmm. and just learned for me to just relax and do my producer role yeah um because I wasn't directing this time so that was like um different different for me because I'm always wearing all the hats and Mm -hmm. I did not have to cater as much as I normally do (laughs) because I'm the I'm our craft services too wow 
So um, my mom, yeah. she did craft services yeah. um, this time. But this time, thanks to DoorDash yeah. and yeah. Um, Uber Eats and these places now, <laughs> right. you know, it, it helps mm-hmm. with trying to be your own craft service. Definitely. Definitely. Be your own caterer, trying to, you know, provide, trying to give them the food. It's like, yeah, that was, I stepped back from that. Yeah. So on the flip, what is, what was the easiest part? The easiest part was showing up to set mm-hmm. and not having to deal with, okay, are the is, is the lighting person here? Who called out? Who mm-hmm. said they could not make it? Mm-hmm. Um, um, This actor, they said they couldn't make it today. You're like, okay, so what am I supposed to do? It wasn't like that. Yeah. Everyone, everything, just fell, everything just fell into place. Yeah, yeah. And, I, you know, I know that that comes from picking and choosing people that you know are going to mesh mm-hmm. that's very important and I'm glad that you were able to experience that because I don't know if you have but I've been on some sets that were a mess oh yeah people smoking weed mm. in the church parking lot yeah I put oh. it out there yes things like that oh gosh no yes church park. can you imagine <laughs> I don't even know how they even can you imagine? I can I can see it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I have been on some really you know, I don't even want to say the word that I want to say, but just the R word unprofessional. Oh, they're gonna say ratchet. That yes. That's oh. that word. Yes. Go get them. But just unprofessional. Right. You know what I mean? And people just not realizing that you can't you're not gonna have a good film if there's no cohesiveness with mm-hmm. your crew and your cast, mm-hmm. you know. So I'm glad that you were able to experience and it you it shows in your film, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? That that um there was some ease there, you yeah. know? So Cause I, I didn't and I didn't hire the crew. Okay. The um director hired the crew. Well he knew what he was doing. Yeah, he mm-hmm. um he has already worked with some of these um some of these I'm going to say students because some of them are still students at SCAD. Wow. And they're in their <laughs> junior and senior year, and they did a great job. Yeah. Yeah, they did a great job. Yeah. I was like, Miss Andre, I was like, uh, I haven't been called that before, <laughs> but okay. <laughs> it's like, okay, I'll take it. <laughs> right, right. I got you. So what advice would you give someone that is, that has written and produced their film? Like, what advice would you give them? I would... Tell them to keep going. Mm-hmm. I would tell them not to give up, to um, continue to produce, write, and direct, mm-hmm. you know, their films until one day they can become Hollywood independent. Mm-hmm. Um, That's my goal. I want to be Hollywood independent, have my own studio, and just... What, what does that mean when you say Hollywood independent? I like that term. I don't think I've heard that. Set um, before. I think Hollywood independent is when you have investors, hmm. <laughs> and I'm going to say a, a an actor that's an investor or or an actor that wants to produce your project mm-hmm. and still that allow you to have creative control. Mm-hmm. That means that's Hollywood money coming in, right? But you're not necessarily under the Hollywood right. Code. Got it. And you have more of. A list actor or mm-hmm. B list actor in your um production. In productions, right. So that's what I advise every filmmaker to just continue to do that because it, it can happen. Mm-hmm. Um, I think sometimes we put age limit mm-hmm. on ourselves. For sure. And just because you may be 35 and you thinking that, oh, I haven't I'm not like my friends. My friends, they in a $250,000 bracket. They driving this car. They got this type of house. But that may not be for you. Right. You know, you pick and choose your battles. And um, and you pick your profession. It's something that you choose. I chose filmmaking yeah. as a um, profession that I want to continue to do. And it may be, it's going to be hard. Mm-hmm. But I know I can get to that level you know, one day. Yeah, and you are. So that's how I see it. You're in that direction. You're definitely going to be there. Winning awards and everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I my favorite horror film, and I do have one, is Demon Knights. That was Tell with Billy Jane. Oh, yeah, that's... 
and Jada Pinkett. Yeah, that's one of my favorites too. <laughs> and the reason why I like it so much is because it was funny. Right. It was I like the evil deads and the the funny ones. Yeah, the funny ones. I'm not ones. big on exorcist. Yeah. I, mm-mm. Okay. See, I don't deal with <laughs> Think the, on it. What are those called? The the um, I don't know. The what's that term? The possession movies is not my thing. Yeah, I cannot watch. It's too, it's too, it's real life. Yes, it's too ma'am. much. So I'm like the possession stuff. Totally agree. That's not my thing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do those. I don't even watch. I can't even deal with the Conjuring movies. Yeah. Or the Amityville movies. Me it's too intense. It's scary. That bell. If they keep ringing that bell. <laughs> It, it, yeah, too scary, too real. I totally agree. Yeah, I can't do. I can't can't deal with those. I know. I feel you on that. So, with that being said, what com- components do you think make a movie scary? The fear of not knowing. Ooh, I love it. And not seeing, you know, not not seeing the terror the or the horror. Yeah, the suspense. Got you. You know, um, coming, you know, towards you. Yeah. Okay. So that's it. I love it. Love it. Yeah, the fear of the unknown. And that's you went it. you it. went with the um you went more with the uh gory. Yeah, this time. <laughs> you because, said yeah this time. <laughs> yeah. But I was like, um, I said I need something that's gonna be different. It's not like gore like the Saw movies. Yeah. That's that's like a lot going on. Yeah. And it was in our budget and I don't wanna do gore. I just wanted to do like a psychological horror where you thinking and have the audience thinking as well okay what's going to happen mm-hmm. and have them at the end like I didn't know the movie's going to end like that right <laughs> you know, put them in different like have the you audience go to different that. directions and stuff <laughs> you definitely achieved that I was like wow okay <laughs> I mean you know he was acting a little strange though I ain't gonna lie about that who um, Johnny no Stevie Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He was. <laughs> and then, um, Tawanda Braxton's Camille mm-hmm. um, had made mention of that's a smell, <laughs> right? And I was like, okay, what is that? But then you find out mm-hmm. what that was. So, but yeah, no, that that suspense and that you know guessing what's going to mm-hmm. happen next. Um, you definitely achieved that. So, yeah, love it, love it, love it. Um, you. Uh, an award, and I've said it two times already, but I got to say it again mm-hmm. because I know how important it is. You are an award-winning filmmaker, and I think that is awesome. Yes, I I am. <laughs> it was the, you look like you don't even believe it. No, because I didn't think because this is a um this is the online film festival. Yeah, and I think they've been running for like four years now. Okay, so Royal Wolf, yeah, Royal Wolf. Mm-hmm. So it's not like um. Some people know the film festival. Some people don't know it. But mm-hmm. well, most people know um, the I, I can't I know I don't know how to pronounce this word. Sometimes I'm like cans or cons. Uh-huh. People are familiar with cans. with that film <laughs> festival, Sundance, Sundance mm-hmm. Bronze Land, mm-hmm. um, Tribeca mm-hmm. Film Festival. And people mm-hmm. are familiar with those. Yeah. But just to even be acknowledged and receive an award, I was so shocked. I'm still shocked by it. Because did I, you enter it or did the director? I entered. Um, I entered us into these film festivals. I entered like maybe twenty five film festivals. You went through Film Freeway. Yep, Film Freeway. Love Film Freeway. <laughs> yep. And they, okay. I, I like going through them. I, oh, we used God. to go through Out of Box or something. Out of Box. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't. I think they closed. They, they did. Yeah, they, they're not. They discontinued. Yeah, mm-hmm. not anymore. So I, so I just do Film Freeway and I submitted the film through there. Got it. And I'm waiting to hear back from some more film festivals. Oh, okay. Well, Film Freeway, for people that don't know, is um, an online, uh, I guess you could say, I don't even know how to how to how to describe it. It's it's uh, submit your films through there, like a film festival. You can, yeah, you can submit your film through several film festivals at once through, mm-hmm. film, through through film freeway it's a it's a whole uh database that's the word i was looking for it's an entire database of all the film festivals um international and national mm-hmm. that you can submit your film um and some of them are free some of them are low cost 
Some of them are quite costly, mm -hmm. um, but you can also submit a screenplay as well because I have yeah. a screenplay that's in there. So you, you can submit screenplays, films, uh, shorts, features, um, all that. Uh, you can submit uh, music videos as well. Mm -hmm. So, yes, that's what Film Free, free Film Free, why well, can't talk? Film Freeway. <laughs> that's what that is. Um, so, yeah. My next question for you is, um, and I thought you directed this film as well, mm -mm, but then I, I realized, um, what's his name? Al, 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 Al Walker. Al Walker. Um, he directed it, but I know that you've directed before. And mm -hmm. so I want to ask you a couple of questions about that um, in regards to horror. Um, what is, what, what preparation do you have to have when you're um, directing a horror film? you have to be open-minded mm. to the actor that has never acted in a horror film before mm. and you probably find that a lot too yes because sometimes they i'm not gonna say overdo it but you have to say okay you're screaming <laughs> but you don't have to overdo the scream yes you said it has to be natural not like you don't want to be cheesy you want to be natural, like a natural scream. Like if something scares you, just naturally. Right. Scream. Right. But not like the dramatic, like what the heck is going on with this person? You know those movies back in the day, the ha the Hammer House films. Yes. The I was like, they doing they screaming is awful. Yeah. Or the black exploitation, like Black Love. Yeah. One yeah. of the ladies, she was doing too much in that film. <laughs> she was screaming so. I'm like, it's not that serious. I'm laughing because I did the 48 Hour Film Festival and we did a horror film. And <laughs> I had to be in, in one of the scenes, which I hated because I don't like to be in front of the camera really? at all. Um, go figure. And I had to scream. And I couldn't even do that right. You're what? right. It, it's, it, it should be natural. Oh, God. I don't think, I don't even think we think about that until it's something that we have to do or something that we have to, you know, Pay attention to them, you know. Right. So, yeah, it was horrible. <laughs> Just one scream. It was terrible. That's why I'm laughing at you because I totally get what you're saying right now. Yeah, and yeah. then the the um, then sometimes the the overacting. It's like okay, mm -hmm. just just act. Do what you do. you know. Do what you do. <laughs> right. <laughs> I hear you. Um. What do you love most about directing? Um, being able to go to another place because since I act, being able to help the actor get into character. Hmm. I think that's what it is. Yeah. Okay. Because I, if, if they have a problem with their scene and they'll come to me and ask, like, how should I do this? Mm -hmm. Then I can get into my acting mode and explain to them, um, this is... Now, I'm just acting it out, but you can do it how you would want to act it. Don't, just because I'm a director, um, you don't have to act it out how I want you to do it. Um, do it what makes you feel comfortable. Got you. And that's what one of the parts of like being a, um, a director. So you're not big on, say, for instance, like going word for word. You're you're okay with someone improving or yeah, I'm improvising. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just make sure that you keep that line and keep saying it for continuity. Yeah. You know, my first film, we got we got out of control. <laughs> but that... I'm a script supervisor, so I get it. Yeah. You got, <laughs> so out, of you got out of control, right? <laughs> Just in case you had to do ADR. Yes, for sure. Oh yeah. Can you explain what ADR is? Audio digital recording. Yep. <laughs> um, just in case we it may we may be in a noisy area and the sound didn't get picked up the way it needed to, mm -hmm. then we would have to go back in and do ADR work. Okay. Got it. Got it, got it. I was about to say go more into it because Oh, go more into it, right? It. Just you gotta do the voiceover work just in case you didn't get it in the mic the first time. Okay. All right. Um, ADR means that you have to 
you threw me off when you said oh, that. I think you explained it right. Yes, yeah, you good. And um, it's just it's voiceover work just in case mm-hmm. it didn't get picked up the first time. First time. Got you. Got you. Appreciate that. <laughs> I want to know how you got to Wanda Braxton and Tony Run. To- yes. <laughs> how did you get those people? I actually worked with Tony, Bra- uh, Tawanda, I'm sorry, Tawanda Braxton um, before. Mm-hmm. And she is an awesome person. She yes, is she is. So cool. How did you get them? Okay. So, Tawanda Braxton, the director, directed. Um, to wander in, I think, three films. Oh, okay. Um, no, he was ADing in three films. And this was his first time directing her with my film. And <clears throat> excuse me. I was like, I want to try to get her in this movie, but I don't know how to reach out to her. He said, Well, I know her. I said, What? <laughs> he said, Well, just reach out to her. I said, Okay. I was like, I'm not going to do that. Because I'm like, I don't even know her like that. And right, then right, right. she may not even um Respond back to my email because I had reached out to a, a couple of you know act, actresses that were well known as on TV, and I, it took me two weeks to reach out to her mm. to actually send the email. I had the email, I just didn't send it. Didn't send it. <laughs> so I I emailed her and she emailed so quickly. Look at that. And she said, "Sure." She said, "Um, let she said I'm going to um she said, let me read this, over the script." She emailed. The emailed me back quickly. The second time she said, she said she was loving the script. Oh wow! Um, she said I love this character. She let me know what she think about the um script, and she she loved it. And that's how um we were able to cast her. Mm-hmm. Tony Vaughn, he worked on my first SAG project, um, Clairvoyance, the Ellis Files, and he said if I have any other projects, he's willing to work on them. Because he likes my writing, that's and so cool. he, he he likes that I am a horror writer. Look at that! So, and that's how we was able to get him just from the last from the from the first time I worked with him on the set project. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. So, so for anyone that's trying to get a top name, mm-hmm. um, would you suggest just shooting them an email, or does, um, it, does it depend? Because of social media these days, mm. they have their booking yeah, emails on their Instagram pages. That's right. And I just say go for it. Yeah. Um, they can say yes or no or not respond. Like some people I, I reached out to did not respond back. You're right. And I no. they can just say no or not respond back. I just think that if they can, if they want to, mm-hmm. just build up the confidence and just email the person. Yeah. It's yeah. so it 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 won't hurt. It's no yes or no. Mm-hmm. You just you have to do it. Just do it. Yeah, gotcha. Great advice. Great advice. What you working on? You got anything yet that you're working on right now? Yes, I am. I'm on it. I am working on a new project with two females, um, Tafera Neve. Yes. We went to high school together. Mm, I and, know that. Um, we are North Carolina High School. Okay. School of Performing Arts. That's my girl. <laughs> And um, Emily Jane, who was also in Clairvoyance, the games that children play. And she also um, helped produce and um, executive exactly, exactly produce the game. Not, Johnny, I Want My Liver Back. Okay. And so it's all female. Nice. Um, working on the project Wrong Floor. Okay. Modern day vampire story. Oh, wow. And I, I believe this is going to be a great one, too. Nice. So I'm working on that now. It's a short. It's a short. Mm -hmm. Okay. Short film. And we are in the process of putting a Indiegogo campaign together. Mm -hmm. And it should be up by next week. Okay. Hopefully. I'm going to be looking out for it. So, yeah. And I'm I'm excited about it. Cool. I'm going to be pushing it, too, on my website. (laughs) I am. Um, Because I love the fact that, you know, you do horror. You're female. You're black. I love it. I love it. <laughs> um, real quick, your craft services. Oh yeah, my craft services um company. Sweet I, Pea Crafty. Yes, Sweet Pea Crafty and Catering. Mm-hmm. I just started this business. Um, I love to eat. I love to um. So do I. 
I love to, um, you know, cook. I mean, I mean people are like, well, do you, you should go into that. It's not my passion. I just like to cook. And if I can have another stream of income coming in yeah. to help me produce films, then this is where I want to, you know, try to do that and That's try smart. to at least get on someone's movie set and be their craft services or catering. And it's my mom and I, um, we do that cool. um, together. And I'm going to bring my aunt in because she knows how to make the little cute little fruits out of cutouts, cutouts, and yeah. make a watermelon into a basket and make a cantaloupe into a baby, nice like a newborn baby. <laughs> right, so right, right, you know, right. I'm just trying to make you know, trying to get everyone in that wants to be a part of it. That's cool. That's all right. So, yeah. Bring the family in. Everybody yeah. make money. That's yeah, how we do it. <laughs> well, you know. It's been great having you on my show. Thank you. I'm so glad you came. I had to pin you down, but it's okay. <laughs> it's all you. right. Because you're working and you're busy, and, and I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Andrea. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Shandrea. Get her name right. Um, so that's it. I want to give a few shout-outs. Um, I want to shout-out my writer's room, Tara Delane and Elijah Fulton. Y'all are great. I love y'all. Thank you for working with me. I also want to give a shout out to my uh, jewelist or whatever you want to call it, uh, Coco's House of Bling, www.cocoshouseofbling.com. And I never know what to say on my outros, but I love y'all. And thank you for joining me. We're here Wednesdays, YouTube, Vimeo, Roku, Fire TV. And that's a wrap.